I want to show you some of the most mind-blowing AI projects that I've seen this week, including Luma's reframe option, which expands video in any direction, as well as taking a deep dive into Hicksfield, one of the latest and greatest AI video generators, and I'll show you how you can take basic sketches and turn them into realistic animated Pixar renderings. And first up is Gorilla vs. 100 Men. Now, this is an AI film based on the premise of who would win in a battle between 100 men and a gorilla. Now, this has been visualized by Mr. Abu Joe, and I encourage you to go and check out his YouTube channel. Now, this is a wonderful rendering of AI visuals. As you can see, we've got this fantastically lifelike gorilla charging towards the hundred men, and they come at him one by one, but the gorilla is bashing them out of the way. Now, what's fantastic about this piece is it keeps a beautiful sense of visual aesthetic from scene to scene, and we get a real dynamic intensity in the action and the movement. Here you can see the gorilla barging through all of these different men. Now, the slow motion shots are particularly engaging, and this was created by first generating images inside of Midjourney and then animating them inside of Higgsfield, which is an AI video generator that has somewhat gone under the radar. Now, the AI video generator this was created with is Higgsfield, and this is actually quite an interesting generator that's gone somewhat under the radar. And you can see from their gallery that they do particularly well with human-like and surreal subjects. Now, Higgsfield is quite an interesting choice of AI video generator because it makes a huge deal of its ability to use different video templates. So it's created an entire library of different animated effects that it knows will render very well inside of the platform. So for example, we have everything from like a glam shot to soul jump, which is seeing a body visibly leaving the physical body. Now, this is a different approach to AI video generation, and it's something that allows us to definitively get effective, high quality and consistent results. Now, they're expanding on this approach, and one way they're doing that is with an ads feature, which is where you can upload a single product photo and generate a whole host of different animated advertisements of this product. Now, this is taking much more of a template based approach, almost like a, a Canva of AI, where you are going to get out attractive results, but they're going to feel a little bit generic. Now, let me give you just a quick run through of the UI of Higgsfield. Now, it has a standard AI video generator where you can upload your own images and use those as a base. Let's take a look at the video generation features. And this allows us to create our own videos using a image prompt. You can also add in a text prompt, and then you have the option of selecting three or five seconds, as well as the number of steps. And better quality takes more steps and costs more. Now you can go ahead and generate this. Now the unusual thing about using Higgsfield is that there is this ability to choose motion controls from their library of templates. Now, general allows you to simply create your own motion, but there are this whole host of different effects. So you can apply this thunder of God effect to my character. Now let's take a look at how these two came out. And as you can see, it does a very good job of animating as a AI video tool. However, I'm not convinced that this template approach is the strongest method for moving forward with dedicated AI video generations. I think it can work well for very specific use cases. And certainly if you are looking to get quick and easy videos, but if you're serious about this, I don't think this is going to be the approach. Now it's a pretty expensive video generator comparative to the other options. Now it costs on the lowest plan 30 cents per five credits. So that cost me around about $1 simply to create those two videos. Now compared to Kling, for example, that is very expensive. The Luma Labs new reframe option. And what this does is it allows you to take a clip that you've generated and regenerate it in different aspect ratios. Now, this is incredibly useful for creating content that works across different platforms. So if you're preparing for vertical video or for long form landscape videos, this is incredibly useful. Now, the other use case for this piece of kit is being able to take a 
video and expand it out. So you can actually turn a medium shot into a wide angle shot or a close up into more of a situational compositional shot. Next up, we have some insane gameplay videos that have been generated with AI. And this is showcasing the ability to generate high quality game concepts that can be tested as trailers before being put into full production. Now, this was posted by Evolving AI, and I'll leave a link to everyone I feature in this video in the description below. Now what's great about this is they've left in the prompt, so you can go and try them yourself in mid-journey. Let's do that ourselves and add in a couple of changes. So I'm gonna change London to Bali, which is where I am. And of course, my favorite thing always to do in mid-journey is add dash dash r space four, because what this does is it generates 16 images simultaneously, which means we can rapidly speed up the generation of our work. And here are some of the GTA concepts in Bali that I've gotten out. Well, <laughs> these are pretty epic. I adore these. I would certainly play this game. So I will also leave a link to all of the prompts that I use in this video in the description below as well. So you can try out any of the projects yourself. Now, next up is a project by Dari Thorsteinson. I think I did a fairly good job at pronouncing his name. And what he has created is a compilation of America's funniest AI home videos. Now, what this does incredibly well is mimics the low quality videotape style video from this era. And this creates a sense of realism that it's almost believable that this is the type of video that you would get to see. Now, what makes this incredibly engaging is how ridiculously absurd the videos become <laughs> with this man flopping all around the bowling alleys. And that's interspliced with this woman's accurate reaction. And then you see this man simply collapsing onto the floor after flying uh, with a whole set of balloons. It's this blending of uh, believability and surreality that makes this such an engaging creation of work. You can imagine this working incredibly well for a music video or simply as an intro sequence to any sort of uh, surreal dystopian futuristic film. Now here's an image trend that's been doing the rounds recently on X. And the idea here is you take an image and you ask ChatGPT to create an exact replica of this image. Don't change a thing and run it 70 times or more. And here you can see a woman being slowly transformed into what seems like a, a painting and then into something much more graphic and grotesque until finally becoming a flat piece of art. Now there is another version that's particularly hilarious and this one was made by Crimson Kim and this one is of <laughs> The Rock and takes him through a series of abstractions until he turns entirely into uh, a set of geometric shapes. And this is quite hilarious. Next up, we have an AI short film called Ninja Punk. And this is one of the most incredible uses of Gen AI in filmmaking that I've seen. Now, this is a team of filmmakers who are combining real world acting and the powers of Gen AI to create a short film and the full trailer is absolutely mesmerizing. You can see here just how fantastic the dynamic fighting scenes are, which are some of the hardest things to generate inside of AI. And this is showcasing the possibilities and the future of AI filmmaking. And what's fantastic about this is that they've written a very interesting blog article about the process and what they did is they filmed many of the fight sequences with real stunt team individuals and veterans from some of Hollywood's biggest action films. Now, what they then did is they supercharged the video with Gen AI to add in effects and extra elements. So this film is showcasing how exactly we can blend Gen AI, 3D created cityscapes and sets and AI generated characters as well as performances from live actors and stunt performers layered into advanced AI machine learning workflows. Now, I truly believe that this is an exact demonstration of how we see the future of AI filmmaking and AI creativity in general. And as they say on the blog post here, I completely agree with their mindset. It doesn't replace the craft, it deepens it, and we're just getting started. And it's truly allowing us to do a lot more with lower budgets and with less time, which allows us to create 
more complex and more ambitious works of art. And that's what I think is the beauty of AI. And if you would like to follow along and join the AI revolution, do feel free to subscribe. Next up, we have an art project on Reddit from Rude and Reckless. Now, what this man has done is he's taken the beautiful drawings of his five-year-old son and rendered them using ChatGPT to bring them to life. So here we have this red character, and you can see here, it comes out with a lot of panache and quite a lot of charisma for this very red ball. Next up, we have this uh, quite abstract piece that transforms into a magical toad with a lightning hat. Next up, we have this beautiful green rotund dinosaur that is brought to life in a wonderful and meaningful way. We have this incredible snake-like creature with legs, and you can see it transformed into a beautiful individual here. I would certainly befriend this fair creature in the forest. And this demonstrates uh, what sort of fun you can have. And of course, I could not resist doing this myself. So, if you want to follow along, all you need is a piece of paper. Remember this? This is uh, an old piece of antiquated technology. And a pen. Also an ancient object from centuries past. I don't remember how to use one of these. I mean, grab it like this. Now you can do this with something quite simple and the more odd it is, I think the better it works. So this is my drawing. Now, next up, you can simply take a quick photo of this using your mobile. Now they've added in the prompts that they used here, which is take this drawing created by my child, I'm not a child, and transform it into a photorealistic image or realistic 3D render. Now I will take this prompt, but I will actually adjust it a little bit because I prefer to make it a bit more specific, which I think helps add into the process. Now we can hop into ChatGPT. We're gonna pop our image in ourselves, drag it into the chat. Now I'll paste in the prompts that this man has been using and I will adjust it. So I updated this prompt because I think it lacked a little bit of specificity in this and I want it to be particularly related to creating a photorealistic rendering of a creature. Now I'll add this exact prompt into the free prompts alongside this video. Now ChatGPT does this thing recently where it's asking you which of these responses you like and I find it kind of infuriating because often it gives you two massive long answers and asks you to pick between the two and it's simply such an effort to go through two long essays and then say which one is better than the other. Now the first edition I got out from here was a little bit too photorealistic so I made sure to include the words surreal and to focus on the form and now the output is certainly much more aligned with my original sketch. Pretty ridiculous looking dog. Now of course we can also animate our drawings. Here are a couple of animations I created inside of Kling. Now here is another fantastic example of using AI to bring parts of our nostalgic past to life. And in this example, we see classic GTA Vice City characters brought to life using artificial intelligence. Now we get to bring, that one looks a lot like Sean Connery for sure. And we get to see all of these characters from our beloved childhood brought into reality. Now I remember I was in my early teens when GTA Vice City came out and it was a pretty obscene and scandalous video to be spending hours and hours playing non-stop, but it certainly shaped the man I am. And to that, I can only thank GTA. But if you're interested in trying to do this yourself, there are a couple of methods and I'll show you one right now. So first of all, you need a screenshot from GTA. I think this one will work fine. Make sure you get the highest resolution possible. Then you're gonna save that image as a download. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Crea Enhancer. And this is a great tool for many different situations. And simply come to crea.ai forward slash enhancer, and then you can upload your image, the one that you're going to use. Okay, so all you have to do is select the resolution increase that you would like. Now you actually don't need to increase the resolution too much if you already have a large image. And then you can add in describe, which will make sure that the image comes out closely to the description that is put in. Now you can check that this one is accurate. And then generally you can play with the settings, but I found the standard settings to work fairly well. And you can see this is the version we get out. This is the before, this is after. Now you can download this, but if you want to go a little bit further, you can try playing with the sliders. So I will increase the AI strength, decrease the resemblance, 
and try once more. Once more into the breach, I say. Once more into the AI algorithm. Now, I love this part where you get to see the diffusion process happening in the background and our design emerging. And you can see here we get a lot more detail this time. <laughs> For some reason, we've got sharks. Oh, I see what's happened. It's, it's bled elements from across the collage into each of the windows. Do this with other characters from GTA. Here is a character from GTA 3. And you can see that I have upscaled her with three different settings. And as you can see, each of these has more input from the AI. And you can see that as we ask for a stronger AI strength, we move further away from the original composition, but we get a more realistic output. Now I also did it with this character. And again, I highly recommend that the AI strength has a big impact on the realism of this. However, you do start to lose some of the consistency of your original image. And for animating it, I recommend using Kling. This is my go-to video animator at the moment. Now, you simply have to upload the image that you have and then select the model you want to use. Now, it has a new 2.0 model, which is fairly expensive, but let's test it out. Now, I'll also run this in the 1.6 model so we can get a good comparison about how these two work together. Now, whilst that's running, I wanted to tell you about some interesting news coming out of the Vatican, as we might have seen that there is a new Pope and he has chosen his name, which is traditional for all Popes to do as they become Pope, that they take on a new name. Now, the name that was chosen by this Pope is inspired by, yes, you guessed it, AI. Now, he talks about the work of the church specifically for including people who are rejected, who are from poverty. And he said he chose to take this name, Leo the Fifteenth, called by one of the last Pope Leos, who the great industrial revolution. And he now refers to the current industrial revolution, revolution that we're living through, and that of artificial intelligence, which is posing new challenges, human dignity, justice, and labor. So we're seeing the Pope hop on the old AI bandwagon. I wonder if they'll be bringing out their own AI models soon. Okay, let's have a look at how the models came out. So this is Kling 2.0. You can see we get some pretty decent action going in. The main issue with this is suddenly we have a shark floating in the sky. Now he also does start walking on water, which is a little bit unusual. And this is the 1.6 model. Now, personally, I actually prefer the 1.6 model mainly because the movement is more believable and it has less dynamic elements, but it brings in a more cohesive set of movement. Now, of course, if you wanted to improve this a little bit further, I would probably take this into Photoshop. I would start to erase these elements which are adding in a nonsensical nature to it. And I would experiment with a few different prompts for the video. Now, it's not long until we have Google I.O., which is coming up next week. And we're going to expect a lot of new announcements from Google there. So I will make sure to take a look at that and bring you all the latest news from that. Anyhow, this is a new type of video and I wanted to see how you like it. Did you enjoy this video? If so, please let me know in the comments. I would be very interested to hear how you enjoy it. And if there's anything that you think is interesting that you would like to see me cover on the channel, feel free to let me know. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, why not watch this one next, which is all about some innovative use cases of ChatGPT and multimodality. But most of all, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. It's your support that makes this channel possible. And most of all, I want to wish you a delightful day.